Hello, I'm Dr. Greg Forrest, Clinic Director here at the Pain and Brain Healing Center. I'm a board certified chiropractic neurologist, nationally certified in acupuncture, certified in applied herbal sciences and functional medicine. I specialize here uh, in a natural functional medicine approach to your health problems. I'm the author of the best-selling Why We Hurt, and it has an investigation of the underlying mechanisms of chronic pain and chronic fatigue. Today, what I'd like to talk to you about is digestive issues. You have received this video because you are interested in, in, in chronic uh, digestive problems that you've maybe been dealing with. Uh, they all have an alphabet soup, uh, GERD, uh, IBS, IBD. Um, these are all functional issues that a, va a large portion of our population deal with. Uh, GERD is gastric esophageal reflux disorder. And I'll explain the mechanisms of why that's taking place with you. Irritable bowel. Irritable bowel means I go from diarrhea to constipation. Uh, we'll be talking about chronic constipation. And then there's something where they actually the GI tract gets inflamed severely. Inflammation plays a role in all these disorders, but when it gets severely inflamed, especially in autoimmune disorders, uh, like inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, um, we, we, we get uh, issues that are, are very problematic that we have fixed here at the clinic many, many times. So, but if you want to get better, if you have been um, working in uh, health care, trying to get yourself better with these digestive disorders, taking drugs, maybe getting your spine adjusted, maybe uh, just doing different things, and, and you're, you're just not getting this corrected, then you need to think outside the box. You have the courage to fight, to go outside the box. What is this box made up? Well, if you have a do your doctor's educational perspective, a GI specialist who feels like the only thing that's going to help you are these certain drugs, you got GERD, we're just going to shut off your digestion and give you a proton pump inhibitor like a, a Prilosec or something, and, and you can get that over the counter now. And that really just shuts down your hydrochloric acid production, which shuts down your digestion, increasing malabsorption. Many MDs are now warning about using these uh, these drugs for GERD because uh, we're seeing more osteoporosis and protein maldigestion and just, just a lot of health problems because you're shutting down your digestive process. <clears throat> but if that's your doctor's educational uh, perspective, he's a specialist, he, you know, you came to him, you have reflux, he shuts down your acid, he's done his job. Irritable bowel syndrome, you got diarrhea and he gives you a modem or something just to shut down the movement of your bowel. Well, symptomatically that helps for a while, but that's not always the best thing to do. You're not getting to the underlying cause of the problem. And then insurance companies, they have their policies, and together these two issues set up what's called the standards of care and what's medically necessary. But that may not be what's necessary for you to overcome your health problem. So if you have chronic digestive issues, you need to have the courage to fight. You need to be willing to invest in yourself to invest resources and time and look at a whole different approach because uh, some of them, you know, d defined insanity as doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. So if the drugs are not what is not bringing to full health, then you need to fight for your health. And what does that mean? That means you need to take a look at the F. The F is to refocus your life and look at the food you're eating. Food is central to digestive tract. You may be eating foods that you're allergic to, foods that you're sensitive to just not foods to keep the digestive tract healthy. And the digestive tract needs a lot of proper nutrients because it is, it is 20, 21 feet long. And if you take your digestive tract and, and, and we're just spread it out, it would cover a tennis court. That's a lot of surface area that needs to be kept healthy. And uh, it's, it's very important that we look at immune function in the gut. Why? Because the gut contains 70% of your immune system in something called Peyer's patches, these lymphoid or GALT. Uh, gut-associated lymphoid tissue. These lymphoid tissue this is your immune system. Seven, almost three-quarters of your immune system lies in your gut. And so immune in, uh, dysfunction and inflammation, low-grade inflammation, even if you, know, you did do uh, a biopsy, you have to have gross inflammation to have that show up. And then the G, the G, of course, is looking at the GI tract and genetic issues there. Uh, H is hormone. Hormones, I mean, thyroid. Uh, you may have been misdiagnosed or not properly diagnosed. You may have thyroid dysfunction. Uh, and, and it turns out that you, you have to convert the T4 to T3, and the T3 activation of your GI tract keeps the, the healthy. Uh, G, I mean, thyroid plays a role in keeping your GI tract healthy. So it, it could go all the way back to an improper hormonal balance with the thyroid, your GI issues. And it's well known that um, hypothyroidism creates constipation.
because you have to maintain the GI tract's health. So I look at the thyroid in all my patients' GI issues. Um, and, and sex hormones, adrenal, all these can play a role. And T, toxins. Toxins play a huge role in uh, GI tract issues. Um, there is a bacterial balance in the gut, and when we take in toxins through, uh, through our mouth, I mean the pesticides, herbicides, uh, drugs, um, antibiotics, anything that is toxic to the system, we kill off that bacterial balance, and, and that is huge. So if you really want to heal your, your GI issues, you need to have the courage to really fight, to fight back, to heal that. And uh, <clears throat> well, let's take a look at the GI tract. You know, it's the root of our health. I mean, it's like the tree sending down roots into the tissues of the soil and extracting nutrients. And plants have bacteria surrounding the roots that help them extract nutrients from the soil. And we replicate that with our uh, digestive tract. If you poison the roots of a tree, no matter how healthy the branches and leaves look, eventually it's going to fall over. If your GI tract is poisoned, eventually you're going to fall over. Uh, it's not, people just think it's a nuisance, the GERD, the IBS, the IBD, whatever. Uh, it's, it's, it's the root of health overall. And I haven't found too many people with an unhealthy GI tract that didn't have some chronic muscle pain, some fatigue issues, some brain fog issues. But here's the issue. So here's the GI tract, and we see this. This is a nice cartoon <clears throat> of a healthy pink GI tract, the villi. Uh, we see all these squiggles here, uh, and, and we see these are representing this uh, shield of bacteria. Now this bacteria is three to six pounds. It's really the largest organ in the body, they say. It has, um, there, there are more bacteria in your gut, healthy bacteria, than there are cells in your body. So the old physiology joke, are we here for it or it is here for us? Who's the parasite? But I mean, we, if we were to wipe out this bacteria, we can't live. Over here is the cartoon of an unhealthy GI tract when we have uh, yeast growing and uh, parasites and, other, and in bacterial imbalance and not enough good bacteria. We see the junctions, are, are, we see gaps. That's called leaky gut syndrome. In other words, when we have an imbalance of gut flora, we start getting weakening of the junction. We can then absorb into the underlying, uh, into the immune system here, these pyre patches, this um, lymphoid tissue, this immune system, and activate the immune system, which can lead to inflammation not only in the GI tract, that's hard to find even on a, on a uh, biopsy, but um, w systemically, because this will communicate with the whole immune system of the body. And we're seeing uh, different things that we can look at, like uh, lactoferrin, which tells us if there's inflammation and different, uh, different issues. So here again in more detail with my simple cartoon here is, uh, is your GI tract. So let's, let's, let's get boil this down here, the different issues that you may be dealing with. First of all, <clears throat> the most common one is uh, GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disorder. Now, right in here is a little sphincter that tightens down, and it tightens down and responds. It's got a chemoreceptor that when you actually make your food acidic enough, it responds by whoop, and now you don't get reflux. So instead of actually blocking the acid, you need to actually, the vast majority of people, 90-some percent of it said that who have GERD don't have, they think they have too much acid, they have too little acid. And whenever I give them digestive enzymes for the stomach, that closes down, they don't get the reflux, and they're amazed. Now, <clears throat> with some patients, though, they're getting gastric atrophy. They're not only producing enough. There's two different types of cells here in the stomach lining, one that produces hydrochloric acid, and one that produces mucin. Mucin, so if this is so acidic, to digest protein in my stomach's protein. Why don't I digest my stomach? Very good question. It's because this mucin layer and nothing eats through that. But if you have an unhealthy stomach, you're not producing not only enough digestive enzymes, but not enough mucin. So we have to back up, fix the GI tract, we fix the stomach lining, then start giving the hydrochloric acid and run away. So I, I, we fix this. So gastritis, GERD, ulcerations, all these things that uh, affect the stomach and the beginning of maldigestion. So anyways, if we produce enough hydrochloric acid, it comes in, there's a chemoreceptor right here that stimulates the pancreas. That's the second thing. Pancreas then dumps digestive enzymes, and many have heard of digestive enzymes. 
And dumping enough pancreatic enzymes helps to digest There's proteases, lipases, uh, amylases, all these things that digest protein, lipids, and carbohydrates. And on a digestive stool analysis, I can tell they actually measure the amount of pancreatic enzymes being produced. And so I can tell if your pancreas needs support. I can tell through the digestive stool analysis and urinary organic acid and, and, and then blood lab work if you need uh, more uh, stomach digestive enzymes, HCL and pepsin. Then there's the liver gallbladder. The liver produces bile. The ball gallbladder just actually is a storage and it then dumps it here to help emulsify fats. And many individuals, if you're getting terrible uh, symptoms after eating a fatty meal, you probably have, uh, and you're getting this, uh, this quadrant pain over here around the gallbladder after a meal, then we may need to do a gallbladder flush clean, the liver gallbladder. There's issues there that we need to heal. The liver is huge. And <clears throat> if this is causing problems, this liver is becoming inflamed uh, many times from bile backup. So that's huge. Dietary changes and nutritional care herbs, I can help fix the, the gallbladder liver. So liver, pancreas, all this begins the digestive issue. And if these aren't working in harmony, you're starting to develop maldigestion. Burping, belching, ructation, <clears throat> reflux. Got to fix all this. Then the small intestine. Now small intestine is central to everything. Uh, if we're starting to get a lot of bloating, and lower bowel gas and uh, irritable bowel and all this. <clears throat> this small intestine is huge. And right here we start this really important dysbiosis. This bacterial shield, not enough bacteria, stimulation like we talked about of the underlying um, lymphoid tissue, activation of inflammation. We need to get that. So I do a urinary organic acid profile that's, and in that, I can collect actual uh, byproducts of good or bad bacteria or yeast growing in the small intestine. And uh, what happens is that's absorbed, sent out through the kidney, and we can measure that. Also, digestive stool analysis will tell us about the gut flora in the large bowel and if that is uh, imbalanced. <clears throat> if, and I, I can't tell you, every patient who's had chronic constipation or chronic diarrhea or swinging back and forth, have had some bacterial imbalance. And when I fix that, get rid of the bad stuff, and then give a proper uh, dose of specific probiotics that I find that they need on laboratory testing. There's two different families, the lactobacillus family, which is more the small intestine, the bifido family, the large intestine. <clears throat> and when we get that balanced, we then end up with a much healthier uh, lower digestive tract. So, here are the underlying issues. There are many, many more, and we can talk about that when you come in to the clinic. But it all depends on what we find in the laboratory. First, I take a very thorough history. We do an examination. Uh, we look at history exam, do the laboratory test based on history exam, find the underlying issues, and go after it and fix it. And then usually I'm finding some other systemic issues because if you're not digesting properly, you don't have enough micronutrients. If you have a bacterial balance where you're setting off the immune system or having some systemic issues. So this has far ranging, ranging issues for you. So it's very important that you get after this issue because this is the, um, this is the underlying pennings of good health. The digestive tract again is central to overall health. You let this irritable bowel syndrome just churn on. It's not only uncomfortable and difficult, it's dealing with uh, lower bowel gas and diarrhea and constipation and all that, or getting the GERD and all that. It's downright dangerous to your overall health over time. So you, what I'd like you to do, <clears throat> now that you watch this video, is give us a call at 763-862-7100. Ask for a free consultation. Uh, we'll sit down, bring in any lab tests, any GI tests you've had, any blood lab work, any imaging study of the GI tract. We'll discuss that, and then based on that, I'll give you my best recommendations on how to go forward and correct these underlying digestive issues. Again, don't forget, this is central to your overall health. You need to fight back to get that GI healthy again. I'm Dr. Greg Forrest. I'm a board-certified chiropractic neurologist. I've schooled in natural functional medicine approach to your health problems, and I appreciate you watching this video, and I hope you'll take action on this very important health issue.
give us a call. Thank you.